This tape is part of the Middle Tennessee Oral History Collection designated ZMT 2000.100. <laughs> this is Betty Rowland. Today is uh, Tuesday, April 23rd, 2002. I'm interviewing Horace Reed at the Gore Research Center uh, here at MTSU. The tape of this interview along with the transcription of the interview will become part of the MTSU Oral History Collection and will be available to the public. Future researchers may include portions of this interview in their publications. Is that all right with you, Mr. Good, Reed? Yes. Okay. Um, let's get some things on the record. I need to ask you to state your full name. Full name, Horace Beecher Reed. Okay. Actually, my birth certificate says H.B. Reed, Jr. My, my father really was Horace Beecher Reed, and so my birth certificate says H.B. Reed, Jr., but whenever I started the college and also particularly when I went into the, went into the, uh, the Army, why well, they want your full first name. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, lots of people started calling me Horace then at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but still people in my family uh, call me H.B. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so some people nowadays call me one or the other. I mean, You'll I, answer I did, to either one? Did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your date of birth? July the 8th, 1923. And your place of birth? Etowah, Tennessee. Oh, okay. In, in the eastern Tennessee. I've heard about that. I've heard of that name. Where is that exactly? Uh, Etowah. Uh, it's uh, it's in Monroe, Monroe County. It's between uh, Chattanooga and uh, Knoxville. I, uh, uh, I'd stay maybe a little closer to Knoxville than it is to Chattanooga. Okay. Let's see. We covered your father's name. What was his occupation? Uh, he was a, a salesman of, of a wide variety of different things. Uh, he sold real estate, he sold uh, minerals for cattle, uh, he had sold washing machines, uh, and uh, uh, in particular back during the Depression days, uh, the early, uh, the late, late uh, 20s, and uh, it was hard to get to work of any kind, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but at any rate, he, he had a, variety, a wide variety of sales jobs. Well, he sold furniture at one time there in, in Knoxville at a furniture a dealership and mm -hmm. uh, things of that sort. Your mother's uh, name? Mother's name was Marcus Reed. Uh, uh, Marcus Carthen was her maiden name. Carthron? Uh, C-A-R-T-H-R-O-N. Okay. Carthron. Okay. And uh, she grew up uh, uh, in the vicinity of Marshtown, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the Depression. Do you have memories of the Depression? Yes, very mm -hmm. much. Would you share some yes. of those? Well, I, I remember that uh, it was hard for my father to, to earn enough to, to really feed us correctly. Mm -hmm. Did uh, you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I had three, three brothers, no so, sisters. So it was uh, yes. four children and depression years. Yes, yes, yes. He used to, uh, uh, he, he had a, uh, this is something else by way of sales, uh, there was a little uh, uh, kit, you might say, a little bo a box, or maybe about roughly one foot square, which had in it uh, lemon flavoring uh, and uh, uh, and vanilla flavoring from such as making cakes and so forth. It had a necklace in it, uh, and uh, uh, maybe another th item or two, which he called deals. And he would take these and go uh, over uh, toward the uh, 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 eastward, over into the mountains, like around Sevierville and at least over out to to. Uh, try to sell these to uh, uh, or trade for them is what he was doing largely mm -hmm. to, to people uh, the country people who lived in that in that area mm -hmm. uh, and he had lots of times he'd trade with chickens and he'd, he'd have he had, had a T-model Ford and uh, he had uh, he'd put a chicken cup on front of the, uh, mm -hmm. ca uh, the car and then he'd trade these deal to call them for chickens and then he would bring home chickens uh, for us to use for food. <laughs> so, <laughs> you ate uh, a lot of chicken during the Depression? <laughs> <laughs> oh my and, goodness. And we, we had one cow, one, a cow, uh, that we used for, for milk. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, anyway, lots of times it was pretty hard to get to balance that. Mm -hmm. What are your first memories of, of hearing of the war? Did you have memories of it before you heard of Pearl Harbor? Did you? Did you know there was a war going on? I mean, you would have been young, but what are your earliest memories? Uh, well, I can just remember uh, uh, vague, vaguely, you know, just about that we were, were at war, uh, 
particularly at the beginning of Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. Do you um, remember where you were the day you heard the news of Pearl Harbor? No, I, I'm afraid I really can't. No, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't remember that. Uh, were you still in school? Uh, so you were born in 23 and Pearl Harbor's in December of 41. Uh, I graduated from high school in, in, in June of 1941. Oh, okay. Uh, so you had already yeah. graduated. Yeah, and then, then I started University of Tennessee uh, that summer. Mm -hmm. uh, entered summer school right after graduating from high school. So I would have been at University of Tennessee. But I really can't remember, the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the exact, uh, you know, the, the, the date that that happened. What uh, were your career plans when you entered the University of well, Tennessee? Well, uh, even before graduation uh, from high school, I, I wanted to go into, uh, into science. And uh, I was leaning even then toward biology. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, at the University of Tennessee, I started off majoring in zoology. Mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, followed through with that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you would not have had a chance to finish school before you went into the military. No, no. Back then they had uh, what they call an enlisted reserve corps. Uh, and the students in college could enlist in that and stay uh, in college for a period of time before they then they were called into, into active service. So I, along with lots of other uh, University of Tennessee students, enlisted in that. So what, what did you do in that enlisted reserve uh, corps? You, you just were enlisted. You just continued on your, your usual. There wasn't uh, any course. training? No, no. No, although the, they did have ROTC there at University of Tennessee, which I was in, uh, but uh, that wasn't part of this enlisted uh, uh, ERC, enlisted reserve corps. But at any rate, we were uh, called in to service in, uh, after, after I was in that uh, for a period of time. And I went into service on April 6, 1943. Uh, <coughs> April 6, 1943. So you were drafted uh, at that time? Well, back then everybody had to, re uh, all able-bodied men had to register for the draft. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you either put in class 1A or different classes depending on your physical condition, mental condition, and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, along with most of us, was in 1A, class mm -hmm. 1A, so that means they could, whenever they needed you, they could mm -hmm. call you in okay. active service. Uh, so you <laughs> were living at the university at the time? Uh, I was living with my parents at Knoxville. Oh, okay. It was about three, three and a half miles from our home to, to the University of Tennessee campus. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Were you able to pick the service branch that you joined? No. Uh, well, well, I say no now. Uh, I don't recall on that that I could. I, I don't believe so with that enlisted reserve corps. I don't think you had any choice. To, uh, no, I think, uh, I can't remember where all those went into the Army or not, but mm -hmm. I don't recall if there was any choice mm -hmm. on that. I think if I had, enlisted maybe uh, and been willing to go on in at that time I'm pretty sure there would have been a choice since it's maybe mm -hmm. maybe the Navy or the Air Force or, mm -hmm. the, or I believe they call it the Army Army Air Force at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, Were your brothers any of them did they serve in the uh, uh, my older brother who's two years older than I uh, he, he was in the Pacific area mm -hmm. in World War II and uh, uh, he became a, a technical sergeant uh, and uh, then a, a, a brother just younger than I am, he was about a year and a half younger than I am, he also went into service at about the same, uh, just a little, well, essentially the same time I did, just about. Uh, in fact, we were both down at uh, uh, at uh, Camp Claiborne, not Fort, Fort, I'm sorry, Fort McClellan, Alabama. Uh, our, our, our stay down there kind of overlapped. We weren't there at exactly completely the same time. But, mm -hmm. I remember I visited him once when he was down there at uh, Fort McClellan, Alabama. Mm -hmm. So then we both went over into Europe, he was into Europe, mm -hmm. uh, in different 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 divisions. So, mm -hmm. do you recall your first days in the service? What that was like? Well, <laughs> some of it. What now, was it like? When we first went, uh, when we uh, going uh, from Knoxville to. Uh, Fort Overthorpe, Georgia. That's where we were inducted into the Army. Mm -hmm. There we stayed there, I guess, maybe a couple of weeks and that where we got our, our equipment, mm -hmm. you know, our, mm -hmm. our helmet liners and our clothing and mm -hmm. 
things like that. Uh, so I can remember some things about that, uh, uh, where we stayed in very large barracks, and then uh, leaving there. Uh, I remember I went down there on a train from Knoxville down to there on a train. We went kind of down there individually. I can't remember whether there were others mm -hmm. who were going down the same place or not at that time. But then from uh, uh, Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, uh, which is just across the line from Chattanooga down in, in Georgia, uh, we uh, went uh, to uh, Fort McLeod, Alabama. And I was trying to remember how we got down there. I couldn't remember. But I, I suppose we went by bus, though. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember definitely about that. Now, was uh, Fort McClellan, was that for basic training? Yes, that was for basic military training. What was that like? Uh, well, that was pretty rigorous. Uh, uh, and uh, we were there uh, about two months. There, I think maybe the actual training itself could have lasted maybe just about six weeks. I can't remember sure, or it might have been two months. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But it was a standard length that they were putting the soldiers through at that time, a certain length of time, basic uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, training. Uh, and uh, of course, we had the things like uh, getting up at a certain time and going out and. Uh, formation and uh, certain routine we had to do each day and then lots of different uh, activities, that were different types of training, uh, firing weapons uh, and uh, uh, one type of training was so-called dirty fighting where we kicked uh, the opponent, supposed to kick the opponent in the, in the groin and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, long hacks and uh, uh, water discipline where we were supposed to do without water for you know, even though we were thirsty for a period of time uh, during the during the hot heat of the day, mm -hmm. uh, not not long enough that really injured us, you know, mm -hmm. seriously. But uh, and uh, uh, lectures on uh, hygiene, personal hygiene, first aid, and mm -hmm. uh, on uh, uh, various active various aspects of military military life. Drill and uh, some lectures had to do with the uh, bring us up to date on the war itself, uh, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Uh, do you remember any of your instructors from boot camp? I remember that we had a uh, our company commander was named name of Berger, uh, and he had been uh, before going into the army himself had been a, uh, a landscape uh, architect, uh, but I, I didn't care too much for him. He was, you know, he, he, uh, but uh, and some of the sergeants, uh, they were fairly good. I remember one of them named Fox, and I can't remember some of the others at all. Uh, uh, well, where did you proceed from Camp McClellan, Fort McClellan? Fort McClellan. Uh, <clears throat> they were, it was being kind of advertised in various publications at the, the Enlisted Reserve Corps. Uh, and uh, uh, called ERC, uh, where uh, those soldiers who who, would, who qualified could uh, go into uh, uh, go to some college and uh, be be going to undergo a certain kind of training. Uh, but at any rate, uh, a group of us from uh, Fort McClellan, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Fort, from Fort McClellan went to. Uh, uh, to the Citadel uh, Military uh, College in Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I can't remember how many of us there were, but you had to have a certain IQ, you know, and show promise that you could uh, complete college work. Actually, I'd already mm -hmm. completed some college work already myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but at any rate, the idea that we were going to go into what they call basic engineering, study basic engineering, uh, and then the assumption was that they would need us after the finish this in, in various ways in, in, in the military service. Uh, but anyway, we, we stayed at the uh, uh, Citadel only about a couple of weeks. And then I went to uh, Johns Hopkins University. And uh, now I can't remember whether others of us there went to, to Johns Hopkins too, but at any rate, mm -hmm. I, uh, at any rate, we went to various places. Mm -hmm. uh, so Johns Hopkins University there at their Homewood campus, they call it. Uh, their what campus? Homewood. Okay. It's 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 at a separate place from the medical okay. facilities. So. Uh, so I was there for six months. Only took uh, uh, 
actually some courses I already had, trigonometry and uh, algebra and, uh, and some I hadn't also, but like geography and uh, English and uh, physical education and mm -hmm. so forth. Uh, so we were there in a dormitory uh, for, for six months. Of course, we had our military uh, uniforms on mm -hmm. through that time. And, uh, we we could either we wrote to home. We could either indicate ourselves as a cadet or or private. Either way, there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so anyway, we we uh, we still had activities like uh, close order drill and so forth, uh, just like a regular soldier would. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, kind of you might say during the day we were just regular students. You might say. Mm -hmm. Uh, but anyway, uh, from there they sent most of us back, back to back to regular army activities. So from there, uh, I and a, a group of us went to, down to uh, uh, Camp Cleveland, Louisiana, and uh, uh, there that's where I joined the 84th Infantry Division. <clears throat> of course, we had no safe so as to where we went or what we, what we went into. Uh, Why did the uh, program end that you were in at uh, John Hopkins? Do you know? No, I really don't. I, I suppose they decided uh, they were keeping us, I guess, having us there just to kind of uh, put us, uh, keep us busy, I guess you might say. Uh -huh. uh, maybe I'm, I don't show that, you know, uh -huh. I, I don't say that with uh, trying to be sarcastic, but something to do there. Until they, like needed, until, they need, until they needed to put us into a division to get ready to send us overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you were, now you're at Camp Claiborne and you joined the 84th, but is that in an engineering capacity? No, Based no, on the training no, that no, you had? No, no, <laughs> that's what I'm, that That's my question. What yeah. happened to yeah. that plan? Yeah, well, uh, I guess it was just a uh, scuttle, I guess. You you might say, yeah. <laughs> Of course, the training that we got there at Johns Hopkins and mm -hmm. was useful to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if, if you study mathematics, algebra, and trigonometry, mm -hmm. geography, and uh, things like that, that's going to be of use to you as, mm -hmm. as a soldier. Uh, you're not going in the, the, the combat, let's say, just like an ignorant eighth grade graduate or something like that. You mm -hmm. know better, better how to handle yourself and mm -hmm. understand better what's going on. So it, in that way, it, it certainly helped us. Mm -hmm. uh, but we didn't go in as engineering, in mm -hmm. engineers, though. Uh, so when you become part of the 84th, what is your assignment? Uh, I was, uh, at, when I joined, the, the, I was a light machine gunner in a light machine gun squad mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, now, our company was a, a so-called, uh, 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 well, it's, it's a uh, company E in the, the various of the uh, uh, regiments there was a company which had uh, uh, three rifle platoons and one weapons platoon. Uh, the fourth platoon, we were called the weapons platoon. And uh, there we had uh, two machine gun squads and two mortar squads, two light machine gun squads, and I was in one of those light machine gun squads. Now uh, explain to me the differences in these squads, the machine gun squad and the mortar squad. What? Explain to me who, who yeah. was not there and, yeah. and can't understand where did that fit into the yeah. scheme of? Yeah. Well, I might first go to the rifle. See, see, the three, three platoons were rifle platoons, mm -hmm. and there uh, they'd have uh, 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 the riflemen, and of course they'd be, they'd be squads of riflemen and a squad leader. Mm -hmm. uh, then going to, to the, the fourth platoon, where we had the two mortar uh, squads and the two machine gun squads. Uh, the mortar squads, the mor a mortar is a it's sometimes referred to as a stovepipe, you know, just kind of a slang word. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 81 millimeter mortar. It's about that, uh, about that big. Uh, mm, about uh, six uh, inches diameter. in diameter. Yeah, just, just a tube, mm -hmm. a strong metal tube, mm -hmm. uh, which has uh, the base of it is see it's closed and open. Mm -hmm. uh, one, other than it's open, it's about about this long, and it sits on a, a plate to keep it from sinking in the ground as it fires. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they drop a shell into that. Uh, and then when it hits the uh, bottom, then it, it fires and goes out and forms a, a curved trajectory mm -hmm. uh, over to some target, which may mm -hmm. be a half mile away or a mile away or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, whereas the machine guns, like the, the picture that I showed you, mm -hmm. uh, there we have, it has a belt, a cloth belt, which has uh, these, uh, has the, the uh, shells that go uh, and 
automatically if you pull a trigger while it keeps on firing, uh, mm -hmm. da, 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 something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, ever so often, uh, one of the sh a shell would, would be a tracer bullet where you can you can see it, that is it which way it's going. Mm -hmm. uh, it, in other words, it uh, it uh, is is lit up. Uh, but at any rate, uh, I was in a machine gun squad from the very beginning there. Mm -hmm. yeah. The what do you have to carry? Uh, uh, do you have to carry a lot of ammunition on you as well as the gun? Uh, the uh, the the uh, at first, uh, if it was nine, I was I was an ammunition bearer. Uh, where I carried a, a canis two canisters, somewhat larger than this, but each one had had a a, a belt of, of shells in, uh -huh. uh, and then we carried a, a carbine, which is a small rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, ammunition bearers, and then uh, there's two ammunition bearers in each squad, and then the, uh, there's a, a gunner and an assistant gunner. The gunner is the one who typically does the firing of the machine, and the assistant gunner kind of helps him orient it and so on. So as you saw from picture, it has a tripod it sits on, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, uh, and the, the gunner and sister gunner, they, they carry a forty five caliber pistol. Uh, but this time went on, I was gunner quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. So we, we all of us in the squad, though, were referred to as machine gunners. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're all trained to do whatever we need to do there, mm -hmm. either serve okay. as a gunner, assistant gunner, or an ammunition bearer. Yeah. What's involved in setting up the gun? How long does it take when you're on the move to, to get it up on that tripod? Is it pretty quick? Pretty, yes, yes. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to push this to sure. <coughs> Yes, it's just a matter of sitting it on the tripod there. It kind of, uh, here again, it, it's a long ago, I can't remember, you know, exactly how it attached, but it just kind of goes into place there. Mm -hmm. It's not, you have to, of course, it has to have a firm enough surface to sit it on. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so it doesn't take, uh, the, the tripod folds, uh, kind of folds, has three legs mm -hmm. to it, two, two of them are longer than the, than the third one. But you open it up, and then the gun, the gun sits on it. Uh, we don't have that picture in here, do we? No, I didn't bring yeah, it in here. Uh, at any rate, that, that's, that's the way it works. And, okay. and, there is yeah. a picture and an explanation of the gun uh, yeah. that will be with the transcript. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. incidentally, in training, I, I broke this tooth out right here when I was over with cleaning, cleaning a tripod ready to go overseas. We would uh, cover everything with a very thick sort of grease uh, to keep it from rusting as they were being transported over to mm -hmm. overseas but we were cleaning the, the weapons and uh, putting this stuff on it to call it Cosmoline and uh, Cosmoline? Cosmoline okay. and uh, uh, the, uh, I reckon if one of the feet I felt uh, the end of one uh, struck me in a tooth right, right there and it broke it cracked the tooth one of your front so, teeth yeah, yeah. not here and uh, I had to have a cap on it, so mm -hmm. that's when that happened, though. Mm -hmm. uh, How long were you at Claiborne? <laughs> we were there about uh, uh, s around six months, roughly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you get orders to go overseas? Yes. Do yes. you remember roughly the time that you're going uh, over, the date? No, no, I, of course I can tell you from this, from this but... Uh-huh. Uh, uh, We left Camp Claiborne on September the 6th, 1944. 1944. Yeah, 9.30 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we rode a train. Now this is the division now, as a, as a whole, uh, to Camp Claiborne, New Jersey. Uh, and we arrived there, arrived there at Camp Claiborne, New Jersey on the September the 9th. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> there we uh, had a routine, you know, uh, getting up each day and rarely and mm -hmm. uh, training exercises and so forth just kind of keep us active until we were ready to board the ship to go overseas so uh, do you remember your ship yes that was a, called a it was a british ship uh, called a sterling sterling castle uh <coughs> and it was sterling what's that sterling last word? castle c-a-s-t-l-e oh castle okay, yeah. Sterling castle yeah. was uh what was that trip like? And uh, we left uh, we left uh, uh, Camp Kilmer on September nineteenth, uh, and uh, we were leaving. 
uh, harbor there. Uh, it was foggy, and uh, another ship ran into our ship, <laughs> and, uh, and it damaged our ship. So we had to go back into harbor. Uh, I remember when it happened. You know, it uh, really shook the ship up real, real bad, and, and of course everybody the alarms and all that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, we had to go back into port. Uh, for the ship to be repaired. Did you know what had happened immediately? Well, n um, well, I mean, the fear was submarines, so when you felt that jolt. I can't remember where we started. I, we, I guess it could have been a first thought. I don't remember mm -hmm. about that for sure. But uh, Now, were you traveling in convoy? Yeah. You were still traveling in convoy at that time yeah. to avoid submarines? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did the convoy go on without your ship? Yeah, we went on, but our ship went back. Okay. So uh, some of our... See, our... our our division was on different ships. We couldn't get it all on one ship. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that the 84th? Yes, yes. So they were on yeah. different ships, yeah. but your ship, <laughs> your ship couldn't go. Okay. So we had to go back into port, uh, <coughs> and uh, that that was the 19th uh, when that happened. Then, then uh, we uh, it had they had to have time to repair the ship. So once they got that repaired. Well, we, we left again on the 21st of September. Uh, How long did it take you to cross? I, I, must, I, mean, I, I beg your pardon. Let me see. 21st, left port at 9 feet. Left port at 9 feet. No, it was, 20, it was 21st. I'm sorry. The 19th is when we boarded, September 9th, we boarded Sterling Castle for the first time. It, it was on the 21st of the left port, which, so we stayed on, on a ship there. For, Two days before we left, then. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then on the 21st, that's when that's when we ran the convoy and our ship hit another ship hit ours. Went back in port, and then we, we stayed there another uh, 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 eight days before we left again on the same ship. Did you uh, stay on the ship that time? No, no, we went back. We went back into Camp Kilmer mm -hmm. uh, and stayed at Camp Kilmer there mm -hmm. for those days. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so. Did you travel in convoy? The next time too, yeah. The next time uh, also. Yeah, another convoy, yeah. So they were yeah. leaving pretty often, it sounds like. I guess probably it's probably just about every day, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How yeah. long did it take your convoy to get across? Uh, 28th, uh, let's see, 29th, we left Camp Kilmer at 1 a.m., uh, about 1 a.m. That's past midnight then. Uh, live, arrived at Liverpool, uh, England, on the uh, October the 10th. So it this took. 29th, 10th. Took about 10 11, about 11, days. 11 days, I guess it was. What uh, did you do in route? Well, I remember that they would drop these so called depth charges. Mm -hmm. uh, they were just barrels, just big metal barrels, mm -hmm. uh, oil drums, why they think they had been originally. Uh, and they had explosive in these, and they had them on the deck of the ship. And every so often, they would push one of these overboard, and it'd go down and, and explode at a certain depth uh, to just kind of ward off uh, submarines. Could you feel that? Yeah, you you could hear it, hear it. I can't remember. You know, probably could hear the vibration too. I can't remember that, but I remember you, you knew whenever they were doing this. Mm -hmm. And they just so, drop those routinely. Just at a regular. Certain, yeah. yeah. Well, it's at certain at least at certain localities. You know, mm -hmm. where they probably suspected submarines mm -hmm. might be there mm -hmm. yeah. but on board I remember the food was very 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 bad it really the British, British food that we're using of course they, they were doing the best they could with what they what they had but uh, did you have potatoes a lot someone well, someone else was uh, talking to me about the British <laughs> food and they ate potatoes a lot <laughs> I, I can't recall specifically and I remember that we would have egg boiled eggs which it almost seemed like they were rotten <laughs> uh, I guess they didn't have means of refrigerating them properly and so mm -hmm. forth. Uh, but anyway, the food was very, very poor. Mm. Uh, How did you pass the time? Well, we'd we'd go out on deck and you know, just watch, 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 look at other ships and so forth. I remember at night we could, uh, at least in certain places there, we could just look down and see the the water glow because of the. Uh, uh, the, the, the Small uh, protozoa, which uh, organisms live in the water, which uh, are, are luminescent, mm -hmm. uh, and it just, just water just kind of glow. I remember that detail. 
uh, well, lots of the lots of the soldiers would play cards. I didn't play cards myself, but they, they played cards. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's like things like that. I don't remember a whole lot of other things that we did. Mm -hmm. We're almost at the end of this tape, uh, so I'm we'll be watching it very closely. Uh, you land in Liverpool. How long were you in Liverpool? Uh, d just long enough to get off the board and, and, and leave. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we uh, uh, left Liverpool. Here again, I don't remember our trans. I believe it was on trucks. Uh, but we went to uh, kind of uh, south, uh, the middle of the southern England, I guess you might say, uh, in the vicinity of uh, Winchester. Uh, and we were on a, uh, a large farm, a pasture area and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, where they had some uh, buildings, uh, barracks that had been used by British soldiers earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I remember we had to go out, we got there after dark, and I remember we had to uh, go out and get some straw uh, from a haystack to put on our bunks to, to sleep on. My next question, how long were you in England? Yeah, yeah so on the 31st. I remember we, we did have a, uh, a chance to go into London on a pass. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, I, my, my, I and uh, at least one other, thing like there might have been three of us, who went together uh, by train into, into London. And we spent at least one night there. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if it was one or two. But anyway, we stayed at a hotel in London uh, on a pass and uh, just saw the sightseeing. Mm -hmm. I can remember Piccadilly Cir Circus and uh, Trafalgar Square and places like that, uh, which my wife and I went back a little more than a year ago, to, two years ago, to saw those same places mm -hmm. again. What then, was the uh, reception that the British people had for you as an American soldier? Uh, Friendly, mm -hmm. friendly, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, yeah, quite friendly, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so on the 31st, is that what you said? You move out? 31st of October, 31st, we left the Donald Young estate where we'd been there for quite about 11.35 p.m. 11.35 p.m. That's near midnight, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then we uh, arrived at the railroad station at Stockbridge, so we, this had been by train on November the 1st, and then arrived at Southampton, the port, the port uh, Southampton, at uh, 5 a.m. Uh, so we'd been, been up all night, it looks like. And then the, they boarded, boarded a Belgian ship called the Leopoldville uh, at 9.37 p.m. on November the 1st. Uh, dropped anchor at Omaha Beach on November the 2nd uh, on this ship. Now I remember the food was terrible on that ship also. Uh, and uh, I remember we, we uh, Omaha Beach, you see, that, that's uh, of course where the D -Day, some of the D-Day uh, soldiers landed. Mm -hmm. on the coast of France uh, and uh, this was five months nearly five months after D-Day though mm -hmm. so there wasn't any more fighting there at that time although there was some danger of hitting mines and things like that in the mm -hmm. land uh, uh, so uh, we dropped anchor there off of out, out from the beach just just like they did on D-Day really mm -hmm. uh, and boarded the same type of, be of, of, of landing craft that they did on D-Day mm -hmm. uh, where they had this uh, craft it's flat bottomed uh, uh, thing kind of like a barge you might say with with sides up uh, maybe maybe a yard high or something like that and the front end of it uh, drops down mm -hmm. uh, you know opens up and drops down where the, the soldiers can walk off mm -hmm. uh, but this uh, uh, particularly on D-Day, of course, lots of them were out so far that they practically overhead, you know, when mm -hmm. they uh, you know, went off the ship and some ground getting off of this. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we had to go f transfer from uh, this uh, Belgian ship to these landing barges by going off the side uh, and down uh, rope ladders down to get onto the landing craft. Mm -hmm. 
and then uh, a group of us uh, on these landing craft, and then the landing craft, uh, it was motorized, and it uh, took us on a, uh, to shore. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember whether we had to do any waiting or not, for sure, but any, uh, for certain, but anyway, it, it took us pretty close, at least, to the shore. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure our, our landing was a lot, lot better than <laughs> the ones on D-Day. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, I'm uh, sure. Well, tell me about moving inland. Are you moving to the front? Is that where? You, well, is that your destination? Uh, yes. So, we uh, we uh, uh, of course hiked across. We had our hiking gear, you know, and all the uh, packs and uh, camping equipment and so forth. So, uh, we hiked. Uh, we went up a, a kind of a, a steep climb, uh, and this is at the variable. Uh, a village called Viraval, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, cli climbed up uh, a steep climb here, which I can very, remember very vividly. That vividly doing that, uh, and up kind of to a plateau sort of, and then hiked about eight miles inland, uh, and uh, set up a camp there. And it kind of sort of, I remember there the apple trees in the area, and also it was a sort of a pasture area too. So uh, that's where we overnight spent spent the night. Now I can't tell you how long we stayed there, but took a place here. The second, uh, yeah, we stayed there several. Uh, arrived there on the, November the second. So we left we left uh, the pasture on November the seventh by truck, 6:30 a.m. and then. We motored, run through, eventually through Paris and so forth. And uh, seventh on the uh, on the ninth, on the ninth. Uh, of course, we, we we stopped off each night to, on the way and camped. Mm -hmm. uh, on November ninth, uh, we. Uh, went into a, a woods here at woods area uh, right close to the front uh, this is just inside Germany uh, <coughs> this was by by truck you know a truck convoy that is mm -hmm. and these big military trucks you, you may have seen pictures of them where they <coughs> they have a, a, the, the, the the bed of the truck has a bench on each side, a wooden bench, uh, and uh, then uh, there's a uh, canvas <coughs> canopy which can be pulled over all of this if it's raining mm -hmm. or real cold or bad weather. Uh, but if, it, if it's better weather, well, then it, it's 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 not uh, it's not over the top. Uh, then, right, I can remember when we. Uh, approached to the front, several miles away from it. Uh, you could uh, just like a like a thunderstorm. Of we'd never seen anything like this before except in training, you know, with mm -hmm. heard all steps and shouts and so forth. But, this is somewhat different. You, you see the flashes, the flashes of the exploding. So you would have been. This is in 1944. So you were not 20 years old. I was 19 at the time. I, I went in. I, I might have been 20 at that time. You see, I had to. Yeah. 19 at any rate. Yeah. Uh, so you, rate, you could hear and see. If you can just imagine a, a thunderstorm in the distance, mm -hmm. uh, where just many, many flashes of, of lightning. Mm -hmm. Of course, you didn't see the lightning streaks, but you could see the, the sky lit up. Mm -hmm. You see these flashes, the exploding shells uh, were exploding. Mm -hmm. And you could, hear, you could hear the rumble, you know, of the, of the shells exploding. Mm -hmm. And of course, that sort of thing was new to us. Of course, we knew, we knew of course, Knew what you were headed into. Oh my goodness. So uh, we 
we left it, truck stuff took us over to, so far up close to the front, you know, and it let it, we got out and hiked. And Donald Edwards has a good account of this, of what we did, and also in our, in, in my write-up, uh, one, one of these write-ups I have also, mm -hmm. I've indicated kind of what we did. Mm -hmm. So we hiked along there and uh, for peace and uh, made so many turns across the little bridge and so forth and finally went into a, a woods, uh, which uh, Donald Edwards called a pine woods. And now in my writing also I've referred to it as a pine woods, but actually I'm not absolutely sure that it was really pine trees, but it was coniferous trees, so at any rate. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. it, may, it could well have been spruce, mm -hmm. at any rate, we can just refer to it as a, a pine woods. But at any rate, uh, we spent several uh, days and nights there. The first night we got there, uh, we didn't have time to dig foxholes and so forth, but shells were still coming in around. Uh, and uh, so uh, we stayed there several nights and uh, days. Do you remember yeah. what the weather was like? I know weather uh, was a really big factor in the Battle of the Bulge, which is going to be in December, and this is yeah. mid-November, and you're yeah. moving on a sort of a northward route from the map that you shared with me. Was the weather already a factor? You're spending uh, the night wasn't in the woods. A, yeah, it wasn't extremely cold. At, at, I remember in the woods there, it wasn't extremely cold, no. Mm -hmm. it just kind of fall weather, you might say, like around here, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, but at any rate, the next day we dug our foxholes, and uh, Herbert Siebert was my foxhole mate, uh, and uh, each of us, uh, all all these all of us that implement, we'd carry a shelter half. Uh, carry what? A shelter shelter half, which is a piece of canvas uh, about the size of that door there, roughly, oh, okay. and one end of it was kind of triangular, uh, and you put these two together, and it made a, a pup tent, a tent. Uh -huh. uh, and we had the, the poles and stakes, and, uh, so uh, that that's the kind of tent we would put up. Uh, and uh, we'd enter right there in the woods. I remember we uh, they brought us uh, the uh, kitchen personnel uh, with the cook hot food. I mean, we had had hot food there that we uh, uh, get so forth. Uh, so a number of shells came in while we were in that wooded area, but nobody uh, that I remember was hurt to, at that time. Uh, but then we left there and uh, uh, went on further into Germany. Uh, and uh, then, what, what do you want next? <laughs> Well, um, we're at the section uh, to talk about combat and casualties. Yeah. I might, I might, this is going back just a minute. My wife and I went back to this pine woods. We found it. Uh, oh, did you? Uh, a, a Dutchman that we uh, and his friend, both of them were, were uh, from the Netherlands, uh, who had corresponded before. We got uh, uh, learned about them through this Rail Clear Society. But at any rate, uh, they they were at the time they were not old enough to be in the war itself. Mm -hmm. They would be soldiers, but uh, they do remember the war uh, and American soldiers and so forth. Uh, at any rate, they showed us around when my wife and I went back over there, and uh, they and uh, one of them called Hink, his name is Hink Diedrich. He showed us this pine. He found where the Biden pine woods was. And we went to it, mm -hmm. and we found fox holes there. Did but you? But had been somebody had filled them in pretty uh -huh. much, but st some were, you know, that much deep or something like that maybe. Still evident. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You could see where the, where the fox holes there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so now, now your next question was... Uh, well, about combat and casualties in well, your unit. Well, uh, now from, from there, uh, our first actual, you might say, Firing of weapons and things like that by, by our unit was was a bit later in the uh, vicinity of not too far from uh, uh, a town known as Gallenkirchen, which we didn't fight in ourselves, uh, and also Aachen is another is a, a city there in that, in that vicinity, which is better known to some of the small places where we were. Uh, but. Uh,
here's Aachen right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then uh, here, here's the front on, on the 16th of November. And uh, 84th, is, here's the 84th right here. Mm -hmm. uh, here's Gaiden and Kirshen. And now your group is a little further to the north than all of these other yeah, groups. Yes, yes, these other divisions. Yes. yes. But at any rate, uh, uh, we were, uh, we uh, hiked into Prumern here. Mm -hmm. Prumern, which is a village, and it had been pretty well shelled out. Uh, and uh, then our first uh, combat, so to speak, uh, was a morning, uh, an early, early one morning when we were left Prumern uh, and uh, went on the attack, so to speak, in this direction. Uh, and uh, it was rainy. Uh, things were very wet due uh, to previous rains, and some of the fox over had practically filled up uh, that the Germans had occupied were filled up practically with water. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was getting pretty chilly too, uh, cold, although we had not had any snow at, at that time. Now this, uh, and then this was November the 29th that uh, that we jumped off, as they call it here, from Prumern. Uh, we'd stayed in the basement there a night or two before that time of a house, which was practically demolished itself, uh, and went in this direction across the big open field. And I've got a picture of that sort of thing, some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Here we take it there. Uh, and we approached a uh, a tank trap. It's a large ditch, uh, zigzag, uh, and uh, we got into that uh, ditch, uh, and uh, of course under fire. I can remember tracer bullets just just looked like they were coming over my head, you know, mm -hmm. just or even below my head. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently from German weapons, as far as I could tell. Uh, and of course under shell fire and of course uh, our artillery was laying down heavy artillery in their direction uh, and uh, so uh, we had quite a number of casualties by I've got somewhere a note here how many we had by December the 2nd or something like that but I, I was hit on November 30th, 30th early that morning uh -huh. Been sent back for having for ammunition, and uh, sent back for what? Sent sent back for ammunition, uh, and uh, was uh, ambushed uh, along with some others who were but with me, coming back for ammunition. Uh, but at any rate, I was hit, and slightly in the leg and in the hand, and uh, at any rate, I did take some ammunition back, and then. With my injury, I, I was that was finished as far as uh, that was concerned. So that uh, I was sent back to an aid station. The injury yeah. to your hand yeah. Would, yeah. would not enable you to. No, I mean I could, but it would have gotten infected. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, as you mm -hmm. can imagine, it would need to. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have proceeded on without. Is that, that. where you lost yeah. your finger, finger. Yeah, at that yes. point in time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but at any rate, uh, I can't tell you how many casualties without looking at my notes here, but uh, we had casualties that day. Of course, we had some before then. Uh, and uh, uh, I remember my uh, sergeant in my uh, platoon was killed just a couple of days after I was injured. Uh, and our company commander was injured. And uh, then he got captured. Mm -hmm. uh, there we didn't just two or three days after I was injured. Were uh, you captured? No, no, no. He no. was a few yeah. days later. Yeah, yes. yeah. And... Uh, now, they, did they send you back to a hospital? Yes, yes. I might remark also that it was cold enough then that quite a number of, uh, of uh, soldiers got uh, uh, frostbite and trench foot mm -hmm. were wearing uh, wet socks mm -hmm. for a long period of time not be able to change them mm -hmm. uh, so that didn't happen to me but it happened to quite a number mm -hmm. of us some got had such injury to their through their uh 
your feet or toes had to be amputated and mm-hmm. uh, had to be sent back and couldn't come back to join the group. Were uh, you able to rejoin the group? Yes, I did later. Uh, I was sent back. First, I walked back across, you might say, a more or less deserted battlefield that was behind the front, you see, back, mm-hmm. which we'd, we'd, already been ta- we'd already taken. Mm-hmm. I went back, and uh, a lot of uh, military pa- paraphernalia around, uh, rifles, uh, German, particularly German rifles and so forth, helmets and so mm-hmm. forth, German helmets, the kind of different shape of ours, and uh, so on. Uh, they had apparently picked up their Germans had picked up their dead bodies before they retreated, mm-hmm. and of course the Americans on the American side would have picked up, moved any of theirs before, before I before I came back across that territory. But anyway, uh, I remember though, in a foxhole, uh, as I was walking by there, I saw something move, and I took it to be a German soldier there, who didn't, of course, obviously wouldn't want to come out. You wouldn't think uh, to confront me because. Uh, the fighting was already over there, you see, mm-hmm. and I didn't confront him because I didn't want to get into any tangle with him, you see, because what, what was the point in it? Uh, he could have shot me, you see, or, mm-hmm. uh, and so I just went on by uh, and uh, went back to an aid station uh, at, at a small village, and from there, uh, in a uh, military ambulance, I was taken to, to uh, Liège, Belgium, and uh, stayed there uh, one night or more, I can't remember. And then from there I was flown to to England, uh, along with other with other injured, injured soldiers to England, uh, and went to a field hospital there. And I can't tell you exactly where it was. I haven't mm-hmm. been able to find any records saying exactly where it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, somewhere in southern England, mm-hmm. uh, out away from any big cities. Uh, at the time I knew where it was, but I just don't remember where mm-hmm. it was now. Uh, and uh, there. Uh, uh, there wasn't much. I, I wasn't sick or anything, you know. I just had to. I just had to wait till this healed up. And uh, I remember sweeping the floor, you know, sweeping and tending, doing things around. Did they have to remove it, or did the did no, it, it, the, the injury the injury it was actually gone. Yeah, it was, removed it, it. The, the force of the of the shrapnel mm-hmm. uh, uh, took it took the finger off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also slightly interfering in my leg. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, were there American nurses? Yeah. Along the way, yeah. I haven't interviewed any yeah. anyone who any women yeah. who were overseas. I'm yeah. looking for some. Yeah. To not not at the front. They didn't mm-hmm. have any women at the front mm-hmm. as nurses. All 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 the medics were uh, men. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, in the uh, field hospital, though, there were women nurses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also I remember at, at the Lee's there were some women nurses there too. Mm-hmm. I remember that in Belgium. Uh, so in this in this field hospital we. Uh, they had some wooden buildings where uh, I'm not sure whether any, any of the troops stayed in those or not. They had medical facilities, and uh, I remember though I stayed in along with other soldiers in a in a t- large tent. Well, it may have been a little bit larger than this room. I reckon, as far as, far as well, I'm sure it was larger than this room as far as floor spaces. There maybe a dozen men or so, so where we slept on cots in there and had a, mm-hmm. had a, a little uh, stove which burned either wood or coal. I can't remember which. I wouldn't be surprised why it was coal maybe being it was with England. Uh, but anyway, I remember we, it was kind of cold there in England. It was, uh, I wasn't out on, on the front though at that time. But anyway, it stayed there uh, and re- uh, then finally went back in the direction of my, of my unit. And they would put, would have put me in limited service but I, didn't, I asked them to go back to my unit. Uh, and uh, Why? Well, <laughs> I just went to go back and Had you made friendships there that you wanted? I'm just... There had to be some emotional thoughts involved in, in going back to your unit. I mean, you had yeah. an option to do something else. They they, uh, they had a, a... What do they call them? Replaces? Repo Depo Depot, I think they called them. Mm-hmm. Where they... That was that was on the mainland. I forget where it was exactly uh, <coughs> of Europe. <coughs> where they interview you and so forth, and uh, and uh, uh, 
he said, uh, I remember the man, the officer, uh, I suppose he was an MD, I reckon, uh, interviewing and so forth. And I just, you know, he said, well, send you, I can't remember the words, you know, but anyway, mm -hmm. uh, he was going to send me to some, I don't know where, quartermaster or somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. back in, away from the front, mm -hmm. do something, which, which he assumed that, he assumed this would be a handicap. Mm -hmm. But I told him, no, it would not be, that I could go ahead and be a machine gunner. Uh, and so I went to a stone and wanted to go on back. So you went back to your unit? Yeah, yeah. And did you continue as a machine gunner? Yeah, yes. My goodness. When did you get back to your unit, do you know? It was in early March, or somewhere in the first half of March at any rate. Okay, uh, so the right. war's not over <coughs> no. yet, but the <coughs> Battle of the Bulge, we've, we've, we've oh, really pushed yeah. on, haven't see, we? See, I, I missed that, you see, when I was mm -hmm. injured. Mm -hmm. uh, the Battle of the Bulge there was in December, so mm -hmm. I was back in England when the Battle of the Bulge was going on. Was your unit involved in yeah, that? Yeah, oh, yes. uh -huh. yeah. Yes. Mm. So you rejoined them in March. Yes. Where are they at that point? They're, they're on the, uh, the west bank of the uh, Rhine River. Mm -hmm. Had not yet crossed the Rhine River at a, a city called Crayfield uh, and uh, I remember that we we saw uh, going through there we saw a number of these uh, 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 gliders that they'd been using to uh, take paratroopers across uh, mm -hmm. Americans and where the gliders had crashed in various places and so forth uh, but at any rate <coughs> they were on the west bank of the Elbe River or the uh, Rhine River and then after a few days we went on across the Rhine River. The Germans had been pretty much in retreat here. There wasn't much by way of fighting right, right, right. Mm -hmm. when I got back to there mm -hmm. to, to them, uh, my unit. Uh, so things were moving pretty fast then toward the east uh, and uh, then our next big engagement was at uh, crossing the the Vaser River. W E S E R, the Potentic Vaser in German, mm -hmm. uh, which is not a very broad river, a little bit broader than Stones River, but uh, uh, we crossed the Vaser River under fire. Now I've got our story on that, okay. uh, including fire from from railroad guns, and uh, and then uh, incidentally, I went back to that area too. And we, luckily, we found a a uh, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, who was retired from the German Army, he wasn't in the war, World War II, but he had been later in the German mm -hmm. uh, Army. Uh, I don't know what the hell he called, what he said they, they called it, Federal Federal Army, German Federal Army, or something. Like that. Uh, at any rate, uh, he he had written a book and it, it was writing another book about about the war in that area. So luckily, mm -hmm. we, we we actually when we got to <coughs> When we got to Minden, which is close to where we crossed the river, uh, my wife and I we we went to the church we were inquired, and they sent us to the uh, the uh, archives, the city archives, mm -hmm. and there we found a man who was then referred to us to this Colonel Kleinbenny, Lieutenant Colonel Kleinbenny, uh, who was a a high school teacher really, uh, not far from from mm -hmm. from Minden, uh, so he came over that night to our hotel, and then he. he he showed us maps and everything, and and he showed us where we crossed the river and, and lots of different things. Uh, well, so that, that it was lucky to lucky to mm -hmm. have that happen. But at any rate, uh, after we uh, crossed the Mint, the Vaser, uh, then we went on and took Hanover, the uh, large seat of Hanover, and there was some fighting there, uh, and that's where they they found the one of these slave labor camps and. Uh, liberated them. Uh, I wasn't in on that myself. Uh, uh, so we stayed at Hanover there for a number of days and then we moved on uh, eastward toward the Rhine River by way of a truck. Mm -hmm. The Germans now had pretty well fallen apart mm -hmm. after that. Uh, and uh, we went uh, on to the Elbe River and stayed there for several days at the west bank of the Elbe River and set up our machine gun and so forth there. And, uh, the Germans were coming over from the east toward the west in large numbers, uh, crossing the, the Elbe River in 
barges and small boats and so forth. Uh, and uh, you see, the, the Russians, they, they did not want to surrender their, to the Russians because the Russians are very harsh with them. They took them prisoner. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they, they knew they'd get much better treatment if they surrendered to the Americans. So they so, were coming across the river to surrender? To the surrender to the Americans, yes. Mm -hmm. So they came over in huge, huge numbers. Uh, mm. Where were you when the war ended? We were there on the Elbe River. Were. Yeah, we stayed at the uh, little, uh, I don't have, uh, I didn't bring it up in here. Uh, it, it was that that's truth the house mm -hmm. that we stayed in there on the by the Elbe River. There was a dike between us and the, between this house and the, and the river, you know, to keep the, the water from flowing over into the fields. Do you uh, remember hearing the news that the war was over? Well, and what that was like? <laughs> uh, I, I can remember that, uh, of course, we were there at the, on the Elbe River, and I remember that. Uh, uh, some of our bunch, I, I wasn't in on it myself, it started firing, uh, uh, it, and we, we weren't in an anti-aircraft unit, but I remember we were close there to where there was some soldiers who had a, an anti-aircraft weapon gun, you know, which points up shooting it mm -hmm. up into the air. Uh, that's, I guess, the main thing I remember uh, at that particular time. About that. How long was it after the war ends before you returned to the United States? Do you know roughly? Uh, let's see. We. Um, I was asking how long you you stayed in Europe after the war before yeah, you were able right. to return. All right. Uh, I think the official. Ending date for the war in Europe was uh, May the ninth, but I think it was still May the eighth in the United States here. Mm -hmm. I think the signing was right after midnight, something like that. May the ninth mm -hmm. that we're there. Mm -hmm. uh, but at any rate, we—I uh, don't know what happened, how much longer we stayed right there on the Elbe, uh, but uh, we moved back further back westward, in, in still in Germany though, uh, to two or three different places. Well, as I recall, after the war was over. Uh, and we got to come home on the uh, basis of a point system. Mm -hmm. uh, you got so many points for some different, different things. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I got a point for... We were talking about the point system yeah. that would get you home. Yeah. Now I can't remember how many points, you know, it took at a certain mm -hmm. time. Then any rate, the point uh, for the Bronze Star, point for the Purple Heart, and uh, other points I can't remember what they were for, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I was lucky, I guess you might say, that, that uh, I got to come home before some of the others who were in worse combat than I were, than I was, mm -hmm. been in longer, mm -hmm. uh, just because of this system, the way it worked. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I uh, can't remember exactly what date, what I, well, I, I come to think of it, I remember it's about Thanksgiving when I was headed home. Oh, okay. Because I remember I had Thanksgiving dinner on the ship and I also had Thanksgiving dinner before we left the mainland. So it still took uh, several months. After uh, the war was over see. for you to get... So that would have been late June, July. Yeah, it would have been, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we were around uh, just uh, idling, I would say completely idling. You know, they, they put, we had things that, you know, each day we had to get out in formation, mm -hmm. uh, exercises and uh, things like that. Well, uh, during that time after the war was over and before you returned, were you able to travel any? One, one time. Uh, that, of course, here again, they couldn't let everybody loose at one time. But uh, mm -hmm. I remember some some of some of us went to uh, Paris and different places like that. Uh, and I had an opportunity. I took the opportunity to uh, take a tour down into Austria. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember there was a truck truck a bunch of in, in our, one of these uh, army trucks that we uh, traveled in and. Uh, we went to uh, Hitler's eagle's nest, they called it, Berchtesgaden, Garden in, in, on a high mountain in Austria. I remember we went to Dachau, the concentration camp at Dachau, and uh, went to another concentration camp, I can't remember the name of it, and uh, uh, quite a number of sites then. I remember we went to the Brenner Pass, which is a, a mountain pass between 
uh, Germany, uh, or Austria, I guess, it, in, in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that, that, I can't remember how long, how long we went to, then to Bavaria. Uh, and I can't remember how long that tour was. Uh, a few days, so at any rate. Just a kind of a tour, kind of like tourists might take nowadays, except mm -hmm. that we were in a <laughs> soldiers in an army vehicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. The destruction of the cities and towns was still evident at that point in time. They're, they had certainly not had enough time to begin cleaning up and rebuilding, had they? No, 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 no. Lots, of, lots of the villages in and towns were heavily mm -hmm. had been heavily bombed and just rubble in the mm -hmm. streets and so forth. Was transportation difficult? Rails out? Bridges out? Uh, I mean, you're, you're traveling by truck, but I can imagine that there would have been... I guess, uh, I'd say probably it was pretty bad for the civilians, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we had army transportation uh, ourselves. Before uh, I get you home, <coughs> let, me, uh, let me go back and touch on a few of these things. How did you stay in touch with your family? Did they know where you were? No, no, I just knew that it was in Europe, I reckon. Mm -hmm. See, we weren't allowed to, to tell them where we were. Mm -hmm. uh, they, see, they censored our letters. Mm -hmm. uh, there would have been an officer in my company mm -hmm. uh, who would censor our letters. Mm -hmm. and the fact is, I think that... Uh, yeah, you, right you here. brought a copy of see, right, right, right here, it says... Uh, I'm I don't know what that says up there, but anyway, I reckon they put that stamp on whenever they censored it. Now, that, that Lieutenant Imp, that, that's probably Doc, uh, Lieutenant uh, Derico, Richard Derico, uh, who was Lieutenant of my company. He, so he's one who probably censored his Christmas card. Mm -hmm. so, and if there was something in there that you shouldn't write, like telling them where you were and so forth, they would, I, I suppose they could cut it out with a citizen, I reckon is what they did. Mm -hmm. so. Now, we were talking about diaries earlier because uh, I told you one of the questions here uh, did you keep a personal diary no one has answered in the affirmative but you were telling me about someone who did yeah. and was able to use that to write the book so did yeah. you keep notes no 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 I didn't in fact I hadn't at the time I, I hadn't thought that, the, that if I did see if, if, if it were approved let's say mm -hmm. <laughs> get away with it that it would be good to write all this down you know mm -hmm. in fact is uh, uh, I don't see how he, uh, Donald Edwards, had the time, you know, uh, to to write these notes down and everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and uh, but but he, he managed to do it though. It's a wonderful yeah. thing that he did though. It, yeah. It's yeah. created a very valuable record. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was the food like? Well, now of course on the ships, as I said, it was is real, real bad mm -hmm. uh, going over now. It wasn't so bad coming back on the ship, though. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were on a, another American ship coming back. But at any rate, now on the mainland, though, uh, and, and of course in the hospital in, in England, we had American food there. It wasn't too bad there either. Mm -hmm. uh, but now get, getting back, back on the mainland, land, then you think about, uh, well, here again, after the war, food was pretty good, you know, not, not bad mm -hmm. at all after the war was over. But now in combat, uh, there sometimes the food wasn't, wasn't, wasn't too, too good. Then we had, I guess, maybe some of these soldiers had already told you about the different types of food that we would have. They had uh, K rations, which uh, they packaged in a small box. Uh, you imagine it's about the size of a Cracker Jack box, you know, how it's mm -hmm. size, maybe a little bit larger than those, mm -hmm. uh, which had in a little can of, round can of, uh, of meat of some sort. Uh, you know, like these little little cans of chicken that you can buy mm -hmm. or something like that. It's yeah. grocery. Maybe live, maybe not quite that big. Uh, but you had to open it with a little with a little can opener. They didn't have a pull top like and a little can opener was just a little piece of metal it had a hinge on it, this little teeny thick thing. You, you had to work it around. It took you two or three minutes I guess to open a can with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but that uh, uh, that we had I reckon that came I can't remember whether those may have came came come with each kit, I can't remember. Uh, uh, at any rate, sometimes it would be cheese that was in that little can, mm -hmm. or some kind of meat. Uh, and then, uh, here again, I can't remember all the details, but I remember commonly there would be uh, a stick of chewing gum, which I remember sometimes it would be so hard it would crack, you know, it would <laughs> break. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, some little round crackers, 
kind of like I guess you might say uh, uh, Ritz crackers because that bigger, you know, mm -hmm. or, uh, maybe about that big. And uh, what else would be in there? I, I can't remember what else. Oh yeah, lemonade, I think, little packets of lemonade maybe. Now, it could have been coffee, I can't remember about that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't drink coffee myself, but there might have been coffee in, in those sometimes, I can't remember for sure. Now that's K rations. Yeah, K rations. Uh, now what are the C rations? The C rations was a, would be a can, uh, about uh, about that tall, about three inches tall, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, and about that that diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had in such things as kind of like stew in it. Uh, not, at least at least that was one one variety. There might have been other things in there, but that's that's about mainly what I remember uh, in in those sea rations. And uh, I I didn't think they were too bad myself, but uh, I remember you know you get lots of complaints out of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then uh, in combat we'd uh, typically carry a chocolate bar, uh, which had been about. To, if you cut that off about right there and you have this part over here, it's about that size of, a, of chocolate. Two uh, by three? I guess, something like that, yeah. Hard chocolate. It uh, wasn't real sweet, but it wasn't too bad, though, mm -hmm. I thought. Uh, of course, you'd have a lot of calories in that small amount, you see. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a lot to had to carry around if you had got isolated somewhere where you had to stay mm -hmm. two or three or four days without anything else to eat. Well, that would be something that mm -hmm. would carry you over. That's what they called a D, D rations. How about water? How did you get your water? <clears throat> uh, normally, uh, for a practical, and this is always, really practically always the case, really. I, I don't remember any. Well, I remember one time we didn't have water and all they had was coffee for some reason. I didn't drink coffee, but that's all I had to drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but normally, the kitchen personnel got water uh, from some sources, I don't know just where, as clean as they could get, I reckon. Mm -hmm. Uh, either from public water supplies, if that might have been available, and I suppose they might have had to get it from a river somewhere, I don't know, sometimes, or a creek or something, I don't know, but anyway, they had a great big uh, bag that they call a Lister bag, uh, which was, oh, uh, I guess about this big around, uh, and maybe this this long, That's which it, they hung up either from a tree or something like that, or up on uh, three uh, three legged, three poles, and mm -hmm. had it hanging up, and then this bag had either one, or I can't remember, maybe more than one little faucet at the bottom where you could get water out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, now here again, I, I don't know the details of, of what they would do to purify that water. Of course, it, I suppose in general they couldn't have relied on it, even from a even if it was from, from a public water supply, as it being, you know, pure mm -hmm. or clean, safe to drink. So they, they may have, may have used some kind of a, a, a sterilizing. Uh, uh, chemical in it, mm -hmm. uh, such as uh, halazone tablets. That's what we carried ourselves as individual soldiers, uh, which was uh, the little tablets uh, that we put into water to mm -hmm. and let it let it stand. I forget for how long. I think maybe ten minutes or something like that, so it could uh, dissolve and kill bacteria and protozoa or whatever might have been in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't taste good at all, but. Uh, uh, that's what we had, uh, what we was available, and what we carried around. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> I don't recall that we uh, too often, that too often we had to had to to use that. I, I mm -hmm. think, or, in other words, or, normally in my situation, at any rate, uh, we could get water for that from these bags that were already fixed up for us. Mm -hmm. In other words, I don't ever remember having to get water from a ditch or anything like yeah. that. You know, but I, but I'm sure some soldiers did have to do that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh, supplies. Did you have plenty of supplies? In general, uh, pretty much. Yes, of course there were there were pinches, you know, where you'd run short on ammunition and so forth, like a, in our case there in November 29th. Uh, but in general, there's adequate supplies, a way of re replacements for clothing. Uh, yeah, I was wondering. You were talking about standing in uh, wet well, boots and, yeah, now that, and wet that, socks. That, that could be. That was a. That was a. Uh, bad situation, for instance, when you were on the front and uh, didn't have opportunity to, to get uh, things from from rear. Uh, like uh, in my case, uh, we were causing 
crossing a, a, a ditch which had water in a small ditch and uh, with, with uh, uh, you know your pack on and carrying things uh, I reached over and another soldier was supposed to pull me across that ditch but instead he kind of pulled me sideways and I, I got my feet in the water mm -hmm. uh, that was on November the November 29th really uh, and of course during that night I had wet feet luckily if I'd been out if I'd been out there several days and not able to change I might have gotten trench foot mm -hmm. myself but, but uh, I didn't but uh, anyway we were supposed to carry more than one pair of socks too but uh, I can't remember details on that though but I just probably could have carried a change of socks I reckon mm -hmm. but but some soldiers did get their feet wet and couldn't, couldn't change them uh, but in general the supplies from the rear at least in my situation were generally pretty pretty reasonable but mm -hmm. of course I know in some more some areas some mm -hmm. cases they, they weren't able to get were not able to get supplies mm -hmm. when they needed them they had this red ball express it's called uh -huh. Have you heard anybody mention uh -huh. that? Uh, where the uh, convoys of trucks would carry supplies from the from the ports, like the Harb and, uh, and uh, wherever else they got uh, supplies in from from the United States or in from England, uh, would go in convoys uh, to the front or uh, near the front mm -hmm. uh, with with supplies, ammunition, and clothing, food. And Did so you forth. get your mail that way? I would suppose I would suppose it probably came in that same fashion, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And we got mail over there on the mainland. Or I can't remember how often now. I don't remember whether whether they had you know where practically whether they had daily mail delivered or mm -hmm. not. I can't remember that detail. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you remember? I know you're on the front, but there are times when people are going to play pranks or they'll be humorous or unusual events or was it serious all the time? There, it seems like to me there had to be something to keep you from just cracking under the pressure and the stress. So how did you deal with that? Do you? Well, uh, the, if, if a front had to, if, if a group of soldiers, let's say, had to, stay on the front for a period of time they would rotate us you know uh, mm -hmm. have different units uh, replace the ones around and they'd go back into a, to a rest area mm -hmm. uh, where they would uh, be able to take a bath and that's either have their lo clothes laundered or change to new clothing and mm -hmm. uh, things like that and <clears throat> back there at the rest area uh, uh, then uh, uh, actually I never went back to what, what they call a rest area myself you know but, I just, uh, you know, wasn't in that sort of situation really. Mm -hmm. that, but uh, uh, the, uh, from my understanding, they, of course, they, I, I remember though, even after the war was over, even before before we went to the front, you know, they had things like ball, play softball or, or baseball. I can't remember that. Mm -hmm. I didn't play the one that was really myself, but I may have played ball ball games and mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. Uh, Cards again. Lots, lots of soldiers play cards, uh, and uh, of course, uh, lots of times we'd go out to, and uh, really, you know, there was a rule you weren't supposed to fraternize with mm -hmm. with the with the Germans, uh, mm -hmm. but still the rules were broken pretty often. Mm -hmm. You know, go out and uh, uh, socialize with. Some of the Germans, some some of the soldiers, uh, would uh, would uh, go somewhere and spend the night at, uh, with some woman, you know, mm -hmm. German women around. Well, uh, I was going to ask, did you have an opportunity to interact with the citizens of the areas that you were moving through? Did did you get a chance <coughs> to meet with them, talk with them? What was their reaction to? Not, you? not a whole lot while we were moving, you mm -hmm. know, forward. Mm -hmm. uh, we would there would be a city, uh, a city which was under shelling and bombardment where combat was taking place, uh, mm -hmm. and of course almost always when we moved forward, if the Germans were trying to hold out ahead, it was there would be shelling there, and lots of times that would be in cities. Well, the, the civilians would move would be move would move out, uh, wouldn't stay there except mm -hmm. for a few of them. Sometimes mm -hmm. it'd be a few, maybe some old people or some 
but some who would stay behind in their cellars and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you, you could interact with those. I remember uh, one case there, and I can't remember where it was, uh, but uh, they had a German uh, town. Uh, the uh, the uh, woman who lived at the house fixed, fixed breakfast for it, I remember one day. No, it, it's just as friendly as somebody here in the mm -hmm. country might be to somebody. In other mm -hmm. words, what anything held against you is being a, being a soldier. Mm -hmm. just, uh, just as cordial, I might say, to us as they would have been, say, to another to a German soldier. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let's see, other interaction. I'm trying to think here, but before, while we're still in the actual combat itself. There'd be occasional people, yeah, uh, or would still be around. They sometimes they wouldn't pay much attention to, to you know. You uh, they just uh, or they be kind of act like they're kind of afraid of you, kind of in, in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, more so, we had opportunity to interact with the with the Germans after the war was over. Mm -hmm. uh, and what was that like? Now I remember. There was one German soldier who joined us up uh, on the Elbe River. His name is Hans. Now had this he surrendered? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is after, after after the war was already over. Oh, okay. And he, he was he was wanting to work his way back to wherever he lived. I don't remember where, know where that what that was, but he had an accordion with him. Now wh whether where he got that, I don't know, but <laughs> uh, I may have picked it up somewhere. You know, I don't know where it was, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, he would play the accordion, and it, we, he he would ride on our truck as we moved back. This is after the war was over, mm -hmm. uh, and he just you know just one of us, you might say, uh, and plays accordion and so forth. And so he, he I don't remember how long it was he stayed with us, but it's a period of time of days that he was with us there, and he, I don't know mm -hmm. he might have finally gotten back to where he wanted to go. I don't know he left us there. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see other cases. <coughs> uh, I think that's all that comes to my mind right now. Mm -hmm. uh, How did you handle the pressure and the stress? Well. <laughs> I, I, it's, of course, in actual combat, you might say intense pressure. Mm -hmm. There weren't very many days, you might say, when when that was. You see, mm -hmm. you see, you, uh, right there. In, you know, in other words, in there, the late November it was a period of time of great stress, uh, and of course, extreme fear. You might say, in some cases. Mm -hmm. Or you're out there, and and uh, you uh, you know you have shells coming in. Uh, I don't know what you can do to handle the stress. You just <laughs> just, mm -hmm. just live through it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I know that one one I remember one case there. We were in a barn there, and uh, there was an officer in another unit who was just practically berserk. You might say, cursing and everything. And, uh, the soldiers seemed to uh, his, his, the soldiers under him seemed to respect him, but he would just he would just 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 uh, uh, passed him into pieces. So you did uh, see that. Yeah. Uh, a sergeant in in our unit too, and when we we're in Prumant, uh he had been with us uh, back in the United States, uh, training in uh, Camp Clay, Louisiana, uh, and uh, he wouldn't come out of it, the basement hardly. When he needed to come out to do things, mm -hmm. uh, just just afraid to come out, and uh, so uh, he he was just sent back to the rear somewhere. He, he wasn't you know court martial or anything like that, mm -hmm. as far as I know. He just sent back to a job away from the front, mm -hmm. uh, assigned to some other unit. Did uh, you have something that you did for good luck, or something that you carried? No. Did you no. know of anyone who did? That's another question that. I've asked, and, and I never get a, a positive yeah. response from this list, yeah. the diary yeah. and something yeah. for good luck. There, there may have been. I, I, I'm, 
I'm not I'm not aware. Mm -hmm. It might have been some of them carried a little Bible or something like that. You know. mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that was the case. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, before we come back to the United States and get you back and see what you do after the war. Is there anything else to this? wartime story, World War II story you'd like to add? Oh, I might, uh, if you want me to say some things which are in some of these things I've written up, if you want to, you want to see it on this tape too, or do you just want to go by it? Uh, well, I'm going to include those. Uh, are there some in particular you'd like to mention? Oh, well, I just might say up on the Elbe River there. Mm -hmm. uh, I've written this up, but at any rate, uh, there, uh, uh, I can't remember whether this was a war after D-Day, really. Uh, or after after the the E day, uh, but anyway, after the Grand War was in Elbe River, uh, we uh, I and about four others, I guess, machine gunners, uh, we found a boat and we decided we wanted something to do. So we we rode went across the, the river into the Russian territory mm -hmm. on the other side of the river, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, we made a bunch of Russians there. It's it's kind of Everything all spread out. Uh, mm -hmm. That is open, open land, fields, and so forth, farmland, mm -hmm. uh, and the houses not very close together, and farm buildings and so forth. Then there were some Russians over there in some of those farm buildings, and so we made contact with the Russians. They were very friendly, you know, uh, exuberant, you might say. They mm -hmm. have met some Americans, and we were the same. Having made contact with some of the Russians, mm -hmm. uh, but at any rate, uh, one of them was drunk, and. Uh, he wanted to go back to our side of the river with us, and uh, I was afraid he'd get on the boat and turn it over, you know, with a canoe and turn <laughs> it over, and stand up, you know, maybe turn mm -hmm. it over, but uh, he kept his seat and went on back over with us. Uh, another time we went back over there, and we, we had seen some deer on the Russian side, and uh, so we decided, well, uh, why don't we uh, take our machine gun over there and see if we can get us a deer? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we did. Uh, we went over there and saw a deer and shot it, and take it back over on up to our side uh, of the river and uh, our mess personnel uh, fixed it for uh, made a meal out of it for us. The deer uh, didn't stand a chance against a machine gun, <laughs> did it? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but lots of times there would be members of our uh, organization who would uh, spend a night with, with Women and all, all it took maybe was a pack of cigarettes. That would go a long way. Uh, and, uh, so that's that's that's. I guess that's all it comes to right now to remark about. When you got back um, to the United States, do you recall the day your service ended when you were discharged? Oh, I, I recall about. You know, I mm -hmm. can't, 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 can't recall exactly, but. Uh, we well, came back uh, on, of course, as a, as a bunch of soldiers. I remember coming by the Statue of Liberty in the New York mm -hmm. Harbor there, mm -hmm. and I remember that they were, had a band playing there, and there mm -hmm. were, uh, uh, I don't know what they were, USO personnel or whatever, women and so forth, welcoming us back. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then uh, I went to Fort Knox, Kentucky. Now, I can't remember how I got there. But Fort Knox, Kentucky, was the where I was discharged from the mm -hmm. army at, uh, and uh, I, I don't know how long I was there. Maybe just a few, two or three days. I can't re remember for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember that uh, instead of going straight home, I had been corresponding with a girl who lived in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I went straight to Chicago mm -hmm. uh, and uh, stayed there for a few days. Uh, mm -hmm. And How had you, did you meet her before you went overseas? No, no, I, I, actually, somewhere they had these correspond, list, correspondence clubs, you uh -huh. call them, I reckon, really? and she had sent me her picture and I'd sent uh -huh. her my picture. Uh, they don't, I don't even have that so much nowadays like they do these, mm -hmm. you know, computerized dating services mm -hmm. nowadays, I reckon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what were your plans uh, when you arrived back? Were you planning to go back to school? Were you able yeah. to use the GI Bill? Yeah, yeah. At any rate, uh, I, I didn't, uh, no, there's, that girl and I didn't stay together very long, you mm -hmm. know, I, but at any rate, I, I uh, came back and uh, went, to, of course, from there I went went home, and then uh, I remember my parents there, you know, when I arrived at home and so forth, uh, and 
then I, I'd, I'd been planning all the time though to go back to University of Tennessee or mm -hmm. go back to college somewhere so mm -hmm. I ended up going back to University of Tennessee uh, so that's 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 where I went and they used the GI Bill yeah the GI Bill really uh, created a lot of opportunities for people yeah were there uh, a good many uh, ex-servicemen in school yeah yes yes mm -hmm. Yes, see, that was about the time that they were coming back home in, in large numbers. Mm -hmm. And there were large numbers from coming back uh, mm -hmm. and starting back to college. Well, um, we're just about at the end of this tape. This will be 90 minutes, which is the Library of Congress uh, part. I am going to turn the tape, and we're going to talk about you coming to MTSU. That's today? You want to mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. uh, unless you'd rather come uh, back another time. That's, that's fine. Yeah, is if that you, right? If you want to do it now, yeah. Yeah, uh, because it... It won't be as long as this. I thank you for coming and sharing this story and all the items that are going to be placed with this story. Uh, the maps, you're going to write out some details on the maps to explain them yeah. a little better. I appreciate it. This is an important uh, this is an important project. This is something we're eager to record. Uh, we were talking earlier. These, these memories are part of who you are today. Are they painful still today? Well, this in everyday life, not really, no, mm -hmm. not really. Were you yes. able to talk about it much when you first got back? Well, I guess I could have if I had tried, but just didn't. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> just put it behind me. Uh, you said you belong to uh, organizations, uh, reunion organizations you meet. Once a year, is that what you said? They meet once a year, but I haven't been meeting with them except uh, I've been to two two times. And that that mm -hmm. was uh, uh, this last time that they had it when it was just a, just a month or two ago uh, at uh, Branson, Missouri, and then the year before that at Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's the only two I've been to, mm -hmm. but they've been having these meetings over every year. Uh, I, I guess beginning about the end of the war, I reckon. What do they do at the meetings? Uh, <clears throat> They usually last for two or three or four, three, I guess three to three to four days, uh, where uh, they, uh, for one thing, they they have tours around the area where the reunion mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. just tourist tours, you might say, mm -hmm. or uh, the the uh, ex-soldiers and their wives and family mm -hmm. with them uh, go out on these tours and uh, uh, see things uh, and. Uh, uh, then they have meetings. Uh, there is one meeting where they uh, read out the list of all those who have died uh, during the previous year mm -hmm. and uh, honor them. And uh, they uh, they have a, a couple of business meetings. Uh, and then they have a men's lunch, and they call it, and or breakfast, men's breakfast. I'm sorry, and a women's breakfast. Uh, and then they have a banquet where everybody who wants to comes and uh, a awards banquet I think they call it uh, and give awards to those who have contributed various in various ways to the mm -hmm. society during the past year. Well it's yeah. nice that you have an opportunity to stay in touch with people. Did you make friends, friendships during the war that you've maintained? Yes, yes. But most of those are dead now. Mm -hmm. See, uh, we didn't uh, have opportunity to, to really get to know much of anybody except those who are right in our own unit, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, those in our own squad, uh, in our own platoon. Uh, but uh, if they're in another platoon, you might or might not have known even the same company. Tate, we're going to continue <coughs> talking with Horace Reed. We're going to talk about your time at MTSU. What brought you to MTSU? How did you first come to the campus? Well, uh, I had been teaching down at Shorter College in Rome, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there for four years uh, and uh, I decided I wanted to uh, change mm -hmm. and uh, also I wasn't married yet and uh, I wanted a break uh, mm -hmm. to socialize and so forth. Uh, so I took a year off and went and stayed with my parents at Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And uh, there I met uh, Helen Weeks, as you've known. 
uh, at a Sunday school group, and uh, we were married on June the 6th, uh, 1964. Mm -hmm. it turns out that's uh, uh, 20 years after D-Day, uh, mm -hmm. 44, it's 64, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I applied to, for a teaching position at various colleges, and so I was accepted to teach here at, at MTSU. So we, uh, we came here then uh, in that fall, 1964, and uh, so we've been here in Mercer ever since. Uh, Tell me, uh, now you came to teach in the biology department. Yes. Tell me about the campus that you came to. Very different from today. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Uh, I think we were only about 4,000 4, students, I think, at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lived right across from where the monument is there on Main Street there at what they call then Glen, Glen Apartments, they called them then. Mm -hmm. I, I forget what they call it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but at any rate, uh, and... Uh, the uh, when I was interviewed for a position here, it was De uh, Dean Tucker, and also Quill Cope, who was the president. Dean Cuck Tucker was dean of arts, arts and sciences, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. uh, he interviewed me in in the, uh, if I remember right, it was in the basement of what they now have is the uh, what's that the uh, alumni building uh, there uh, near the uh, it was it was what was then the library. Uh, near the Voorhees Industrial Arts Building, that building right there. Oh, okay. Uh, at any rate, uh, that building was there. That was the library at that time. Uh, the old swimming pool, the old gym was there. Mm -hmm. uh, and across the road over there at uh, Ellington's Home Economics, there's, there was that older building was over there. Uh, the two dormitories there on uh, Main Street were there. Uh, uh, and the what we call the old science building, and I call it the Davis or the Wiser Patton Science Building was there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the Coke Building was not built, the uh, new classroom building or the uh, what's mm -hmm. called now the uh, Peck Hall. Peck Hall was mm -hmm. not was not there. The building you interviewed in then must have been uh, Old Main, Kirksey Old Main. Uh, that that's where I talked with Dr. Cope. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was in a, what's, what's I think now a classroom. It was a great big room there on mm -hmm. where you go up the steps on that level up there. Mm -hmm. But Dean Tucker, uh, when I interviewed him, he was at, in, in that building, uh, which is on over toward the, over toward the, the old, uh, toward the, the Warhees Industrial. The department. alumni center. Today. Yeah, yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's where it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I remember, it was down in the basement. Uh, if they I, had a basement, they might not have a basement. I don't think but there it was is in, a it's in that building though. Or I'm yeah. not familiar with the basement. Yeah, yeah. I seem like, yeah. Um, the campus that you came to at that time, that's the 60s. That's a period we've been really interested in because there were a lot of changes here at MTSU between 1964 and 1974. You see a lot of things going on. The first African-American students are showing up on campus. Do you remember what that transition was like, what the racial climate was like. Do you remember any difficulties at that point in time? Uh, I, I can't remember any big difficulties. Uh, <clears throat> I can't even remember when the, we had the first Afro-American in, in my classes. I can't remember definitely about that. Oh, really? Uh, no, I it can't was remember smooth. Sure smooth transition yeah. then that didn't I, I can't remember big difficulties mm -hmm. I remember about this squabble they had about the uh, emblem they had on the uh, university Nathan center Beckett there Forrest. that good yeah that really good thing mm -hmm. but of course that's in been, been more recent more recent years that that's happened um, uh, along about 1970-71 uh, we have what's called the Dixie controversy and looking back on it now uh, where they were looking at the uh, the mascot and the flag being the Dixie flag and playing a, the Dixie song and uh, so that's what you're recalling I guess uh, yeah. the removal of those things yeah. was that pretty easy uh, was it accomplished painlessly <laughs> do you remember uh, well I remember you know I remember reading you know mm -hmm. That there was, you know, some 
one's one thing and someone is another. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, Do you remember um, Dr. Scarlett coming? Yes. What was that like? Uh, well, I, I thought he was doing, you know, a good job myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember his inauguration and marching in it to, at the outdoors there. Uh, that's, uh, you know, on the lawn there mm -hmm. on the north side of the Coke building. Uh, and uh, I got the impression that uh, really he was removed because of political, what I, what I felt myself. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that dean uh, that uh, governor uh, what's his name uh, uh, the governor at that time wanted to put Ingram in. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Another thing students were facing at that time uh, would be Vietnam. Do you remember what what issues that brought up on campus? Uh, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't, can't remember a whole lot about about that. And another thing that happened during that time period was a, a changing in rules and regulations for young women. They had curfews and, and things, and, and those are lessened tremendously. So it's, yeah. it, that's a change. Yeah, I time. remember there were complaints about uh, Martha Hampton Mm -hmm. I remember. Uh, You're going to tell me the raincoat story, aren't you? <laughs> well, I don't remember Everyone that. I have interviewed remembers that young ladies couldn't walk across campus in shorts. They had to wear a raincoat. I see. No, <laughs> I don't remember that specific. Are you really? <laughs> You're really not remembering? Everyone tells me that story. It stands yeah. out in a lot of people's minds. Yeah. I remember Bob uh, LaLance uh, had problems with students from time to time. I can't mm -hmm. remember specifically what, what they were. But, uh, I remember when the, my first office was in the barracks that they had uh, about where the uh, where the Davis Science building is now. Mm -hmm. There were two, possibly three of those buildings. Wooden barracks type buildings where, where during the war they had had uh, trainees here uh, kind of like uh, they, were, they, were, they were in the in this in the service. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, but actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether they're Air Force or, or what they were. I've got a gentleman that I'm going to be interviewing about that. That's the uh, uh, college training detachment that was here it was. on campus. Yeah. But they, they were gone by the time I came in 1964, but uh, those buildings were still, still there, and that's where uh, I had my office and some of the other biology faculty members had their office there. Of course, they towed those down after a few years after mm -hmm. that. Uh, yeah. And, uh, of course, the only swim pool they had on campus then was the old pool over there at the Alumni Memorial Gym. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a big log log house over on beyond kind of where the observatory is now. And, uh, of course, no, no, no family housing buildings around. And uh, neither of the high-rise dormitories mm -hmm. were there mm -hmm. uh, and they had gardens where, where, the, where the staff and students could have a garden plot over about where the uh, parking lot is there uh, uh, this side of the recreation center mm -hmm. uh, really across the road this across the road this side of the recreation center did you take uh, advantage of that did no, you have a garden no we, we had some space at, at our, in our own yard we had a garden mm -hmm. we didn't one there. I yeah. pulled this supplement from the sidelines. Um, I just wondered if there were some people, this is faculty, I mean this is administrative here and then the biology faculty will be a few pages over and I just thought maybe if you could share some, um, there's biology right in there, maybe you could share some memories of some of these people in, in a few minutes. In, to any, any, in any department here or anything? Yeah. Yeah, well of course I remember Dr. Scarlett. Mm -hmm. uh, very well, and uh, Dr. Kirksey, yeah, I remember him. He was really, really keen-witted. He, he always had some really good jokes. I don't know how really? he had so many, but every every meeting that he had anything to 
in the reason to speak. Well, he had he had, he had some good jokes. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, 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 and uh, I remember him, but not not a whole lot about him, and I don't okay. remember a whole lot about some of these others. Although I just the ones that I stand knew, out. I knew most of them one way or another. Yeah. Let's see, Dr. Homer Pittard, yeah, I remember him real well. What memory stands out about uh, Homer well, Pittard? Well, he's kind of witty, sort of, and I don't know how to put it. To, <laughs> uh, let's see, Hicks and Pugh, we were on the track team at the University of Tennessee together. Oh, really? Yeah. He was a... Ran shorter distances than I was, ran the longer distances. Do you still run today? You told me you jog yeah. here on campus. Yeah, I, I, I mostly just walk really nowadays. But I run a little bit. But my wife, does, she's more so on running. Uh, she runs a whole lot. In fact, is we're both signed up for this uh, music. Country music, Country marathon? music mar Really, I think we're just going to run the half marathon. I think we're really signed up for the full marathon. I think we may just settle a little for the half marathon. That is really amazing. Now you are 70, 78. 78. And going to be running in the music, country music, well, the Music City Marathon, I think. They so call it is. Country my, music. my son's running it twice. And, I see. Uh, but it's always interesting to me, there are many older runners. Yeah. Do you encounter many here in town? Do you belong to a running club or do you just run? Well. They, they, they used to have a running club here in Murfreesboro called the Murfreesboro Pacers, but they haven't, it has, that, that kind of faded out maybe 10 years ago or so. But that, they still have the Nashville Striders. We belong to the Nashville Striders. Do you? Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I know of several runners who are about my age around. Yeah. What time do you predict for your half marathon? Oh. <laughs> oh you must have uh, a goal. Uh, let me think here a minute. I think in terms of about, about four hours, I guess. My goodness. But uh, my wife, uh, Helen, she can she, uh, she 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 ran the Rocket City Marathon last December mm -hmm. in five. What was her time? Five, five hours and five hours and forty minutes. Well, I tell you, that's just yeah. amazing to me. You have my She's 65. You or 66 have. now. Right? My goodness. Uh, yeah. well, I'm going to let you, I'm going to pull this away from the recorder a bit. I'm going to let you look at this biology faculty page and see if there are any biology faculty there that you can share some memories about. I haven't interviewed a lot of people who, who have memories of some of these yeah. faculty members that are gone now. Yeah. Aldridge, he wasn't here very long. He had been a high school teacher. And he taught microbiology, and then I think he went back. He was in an automobile accident. I think he he was uh, had been away somewhere on a vacation or you know a holiday or something. Or other. Came back and his automobile turned over, and it kind of you know physically affected him. Uh, that could be why he went to back to high school teaching. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Doyle, of course, we know him still around mm -hmm. uh, quite well. Dr. Dunn, she came here I think back in 1965, uh, and. Uh, she had been down at Shorter College, really. She came to Shorter College after I left, and then she came back up here, kind of following me, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, it just happened, uh, I think, a year after I came here. Uh, and, of course, she died of, of, I believe, thyroid cancer about several years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Fletcher, yeah, I know him quite well. He's, uh, I think he's still, he and his wife still live over here somewhere, I think, on the other side of Greenland. But there, I heard that he was thinking about moving to... Uh, to Nashville to be where his daughter lives. Mm -hmm. uh, Hemerly, Kenneth Hemerly, that's Tom Hemerly's brother, Tom and Hemerly. Uh, where is his picture? I don't know. This is for just one selected year, so it may. Yeah. Tom, oh, I guess Tom Hemerly, he must have still been, he must have been working on his doctorate at that time. Uh, you know, Tom Hemerly in the biology department now is, is still there in biology mm -hmm. now. And, and this is his, this brother? his younger brother, yes. Kenneth. He was here. I, I don't know whether he was here more than you know, one year or not. Mm -hmm. and I think he went down to Florida or somewhere and did something down okay. there. I'm not sure. Uh, Philip Mathis, of course, he's still here. Uh, now, do you want to know about him or just where? 
Just, uh, well, well, things you remember about them. Yeah. Just well, uh, memories. Well, I remember very, you know, I remember well. It's hard to me to, you know, characterize them or uh, that sort of thing, I guess. Uh, uh, a lot of, well, it's yeah. interesting there's only one female on the faculty at that point yeah, in time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and all are white, too. Mm. McCall, he was here for, I don't know, two or three years. And he, I don't know where he went exactly. Of course, Dr. Parchment died two or three years ago. Uh, and, uh, uh, Dr. Patton, of course, had been head of the biology department. Was he the head of the biology department? When I came, time? yes, yes, when I came. Uh, the biology department has not had a lot of different chairs. No, there haven't been a lot of changes. Uh, following Dr. Patton, there's Dr. Dr. Murphy, who's still the, the mm -hmm. biology department head. How uh, long was Dr. Patton, do you know? Well, uh, I guess he came to the MTSU, I don't know, maybe 1960 or something like that, I'm not sure. He mm -hmm. certainly had been here a number of years when I came in 1964. And then he stayed as department head uh, until uh, 64, let's see, 70, 64, 70, 75. I, I can't remember just when Dr. Murphy mm -hmm. uh, took over and Dr. Patton retired. It might have been 75 or but not 80. He was he was head of the department for quite a number of years. But not a lot of changes in leadership and biology. No, no. Not like we have in, in some of the other departments. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dr. Rucker, he still lives over not too far from where I live. Uh, but he's in a wheelchair, I think, practically all the time. Uh, he was here when I came. Dr. Sharp, I understand that he died several years back. Uh, Dr. Wells still 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 teaching. Dr. Weiser, see him a lot over at the recreation center. And he was here when I came to MTSU. Now, Weiser Patton, the building is yeah. named for those two. Yeah, yes. My goodness. Yeah. Other memories you'd like to share of MTSU? I know I've kept you here a long time, <laughs> but I saw it through a lot of changes. Well, <laughs> it's kind of, kind of hard to think of something that might be general, uh, general interest. Just my own specific, some details about my own self. I reckon I could say, uh, when I when I moved from the uh, barracks, my office, uh, we went. To the, they moved some of us over to the to the Cope building upon the second floor, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, then I I forget how long I was there. Maybe a year or something like that. Uh, in a in a fairly large room with some other staff members, then moved to the, the uh, top floor of the of the what's now called the uh, Weiser Patton Science Building. My office was there, where, next to where they had a museum up there at that time, a small museum. Uh, Is that where the stuffed animals are? I reckon they're still up there. I haven't been up there uh -huh. in a long time. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. I remember seeing kind of, kind of the middle of the, of the mm -hmm. building, middle, middle of the floor up there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so you got moved around a good bit. Yeah, and then then once they got the new the the uh, Davis Science Building built, of course we we called it for we called it New Science Building for several years. But mm -hmm. but uh, my office was in there then for for a number of years, mm -hmm. uh, and then then. Uh, on part time, when I was on some of the, some of the time, was when I was on part time, I was over in uh, uh, Jones Jones Hall. Now, what uh, was your specialty? Uh, entomology, uh, instead of insects. Uh, Doctor McGee teaches that now. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. But it's been it's been interesting to see. The construction, I mean, it's just uh, you know, particularly the last 10 years or so, it's just something, more than one thing, new coming up, it seems like, new building. Mm -hmm. yeah. Constant yeah. state of change. Yeah. Did you attend the inauguration last no, week? No, no. That's only the second one in history. We've had 10 presidents, but that's only the second <laughs> inauguration. You attended the first, Dr. <laughs> Scarlett. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming today to spend time and... I've kept you from running, or have you already been running this morning? Oh, I, I went out with the rec center. I didn't run this morning, but 
one of the rec center. Well, let's see, the Music City Marathon is this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, it's this Saturday. Yeah. Well, my goodness, I'll be watching for you on the news. <laughs> <laughs> Have you run there before? Uh, at the Music City uh, Marathon? Uh, or country uh, uh, music? They changed the name on it, didn't they? Yeah, I di uh, yeah. When they used to call it the uh, the Music City Marathon, I did it. I did the full marathon once. Mm -hmm. uh, that was I don't know six or eight years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I, I never have done uh, done the the country music marathon. Mm -hmm. no. Well, yeah. I'll be watching for you on the news. <laughs> 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 it's really neat standing there at you know at the finish line, either either one, the half marathon or the other. Um, such a it's just really emotional to, to see people crossing that line because that's yeah. more that's something to be proud of that's quite a distance to go thank you for this yeah, interview sure. today and this material and you're going to be back with